Hello everyone and welcome to video number 6 of our PHP web developing tutorials. In this video we're going to cover conditionals. And by conditionals I mean in the flow of logic in our programming whenever we we want to test to see if something is true or false. And yeah, that's basically what you, you do a lot of this in programming or you're testing if something is true or false and then changing your flow of execution based on that, that condition. And we're just going to show that in a simple form here. Let's create a variable just called foo equals true. Okay. So let's say that you you're you're writing a program. You don't really know if foo is true, but you want to do something based on whether foo is true or not. We're we're setting foo equal to foo, true here explicitly. And by the way, in boolean variables, you could say true like that, or you could say true like this. So let's say you, you've got a huge program and you don't know if foo is true or false, but you want to set a condition based off of that. You want to say if if tr if foo is true, then do something. So that's basically how you write it. If, and we use uh, parentheses here, if foo is equal to true, we use a double equal sign here for the comparison operator. This is a comparison operator that checks to see if this is equal to this. So if foo is equal to true, then curly brace will we'll, we'll do some code in here. So if this is true, then we'll do this. So if this is true, then we'll echo foo is true, just like that. So now if we save that and look at our page, foo is true, it says. And I actually put a semicolon in there. I didn't really need but foo is true. So now if we change foo to false and we rerun that again, we get a blank page because there's nothing being executed. We're checking to see if foo is true. Foo is false, so we don't execute this. So what if you want to do something else if foo is true, if, if foo is false? So we can say else here, echo foo is false. Let's save that and refresh. Now we see it says foo is false. Foo is false. And we could also say if we, we could set foo equal to zero here. We could see that foo is still false. We could set foo to one, and foo is true. I'm just showing you that zero is false, one is true, and actually any number other than zero is true. Something to note. If we do negative one here, it's still true. So it's something to remember in PHP. If you're going, if you if you're checking to see if something is true or false, and you're using an integer. Based, or you're basing it off an integer. Every number besides zero is true, unless we use a triple equal sign here, which is another comparison operator. If you notice now, when we set foo equal to one, and we save that and we refresh this page, it says that foo is false because our conditional is checking to see if it's explicitly set to a boolean true. This is checking the type as well. So since this is an integer var value, then this is evaluating to be false because foo is not strictly equal to true. It's equal to an integer value of one. If you do not use that triple equals, then this will evaluate to true because one is a true value, which is kind of strange to take in at first, but it's important later on whenever you're comparing things to make sure if you need to compare and make sure that that is returning a f boolean false or a boolean true you need to use tr the three equal sign instead of two equal signs it's more explicit so now we can also check and see if something and we're just going to take out this integer to, to clarify things a little bit we're going to say a foo is true okay so in this comparison we're saying if foo is not equal to true. So save that. And here we'll say is not equal to true. And this is say is equal to true. It, let's refresh that and we'll say foo is equal to true. So we set foo equal to true here. If foo is not true, then we say, let's just, to clarify that a little bit more, not true. And then here we'll just say it's true. Okay, so if foo is true, 
We know that for a fact. This comparison is checking to see if foo is not true. So if you could also say is if foo is false, it would give you the same result. But the not operator is important. You'll use that sometimes as well. So instead of saying is something equal to true, you can say if it's not equal to. If foo is a number, let's say foo is five. We can check to see if foo is greater than or equal to six. And let's change our statement. If foo is greater than or equal to, we'll say is greater than or equal to six. Let's say is not greater than or equal to six. Save that. Now, foo is not greater than or equal to six. So this is that's what this is saying. Is is foo greater than or equal to the number six? So if we put seven here and save that, foo is greater than or equal to six. So that's the greater than or equal to. And you could say simply greater than as well. Is foo greater than six? Yes, foo is greater than six. And instead of doing this, let's just say if ran, and this will say else ran. So that we're using a conditional if and else. We can we don't have to include the else. We can. Another thing, real quick, that I'm going to point out is that you can use single quotes inside of double quotes, like this. We were talking about quotes in a previous video, and that's one way that you can. That's one reason to use both quotes. You can use different. You use quotes in different ways. You can have a double quote surrounding the entire string, and then inside of that, you can actually use single quotes. One thing you can't do is use, you can, yeah, but if you wanted to quote these in double quotes, you'd have to use an escape character. Like that. You have to use escape double quotes. And that'll allow you to actually double quote inside of your double quotes. So. Just something out of the blue there. But now if we have six in foo, six is not is not greater than six. It's equal to, so our else statement runs. Okay, so that's if else. Let's look at if else and another way we can do it. Let's say else if foo is greater than three, then we can say else if ran. I forgot to put this together. Else if ran. Okay. Just like that. So now, you see the else if statement's running. You can have a few different conditions here. You can have two different, you can have the if statement and then you have an else if and then an else. Most of the time I don't use an else if. If I have a lot of things that are going to be checked in my conditions, usually I'll use a, a switch case as well. And that's something we're going to cover right now. The switch case, in the switch case statement, we can simply say the switch is foo. Like this. Case one, for instance. We could print, let's say echo, shoot, uh, foo is equals one. And we want to break out of that case statement. And then we have case two. We can say echo foo equals two. Break out of it. You have to break or it'll keep executing every case statement. So echo foo equals three. Break out of that. And then we'll have a default of echo foo does not equal one, two, or three. This is just a show how to use the switch case we can use we could do more than just those three we could use a bunch we could have a bunch of things down through here let's save that and look at it and say foo does not equal one two or three so we have foo equal to six and we're checking that that foo variable in the switch statement and if if that foo variable were equal to one 
then we would echo that. So if, let's go ahead and change it to one. Save that, refresh, and then we say foo is equal to one. So it's executing this this case here. It doesn't if it doesn't echo any of the others. Now, if we remove those breaks that I put in there, just like so, and save it. See how it went ahead and and executed everything. So in the switch case, it's very important that you put that break after your statement. Because if you don't, it will execute every case underneath the one, I should say, that actually was true. So if I remove these, uh, I hate to go back and do this, but if I remove these, one thing I forgot to point out, it will, if, if I had this set to 2 and saved it, so now it starts at the 2 and echoes, so we have the foo equals 2, and then we have foo equals 3, and then we have foo does not equal, so it's, it's starting with this case, it, it passes this one because it doesn't evaluate to true here, but then if this one evaluates to true because foo is equal to 2 and case is 2, and it starts here, and it just goes ahead and executes all those other case statements, so it's very important to put a break, very important to put a break, so don't forget, don't forget your breaks. Let's go ahead and fill out these breaks, and it should fix it. Okay, so those are the conditionals that you can use. You can check to see if something is equal to or greater than or not equal to and all that. Another thing I want to point out in our if statements, we'll go ahead and remove the switch statement, is the use of logical operators. Let's say we have an if statement. If foo is less than 5, we can also put another condition on here as well or I'll say and greater than and foo is greater than zero so what this is doing is checking to see if the variable foo is less than five and also greater than zero echo true okay so so we're echoing true here foo is greater than zero and less than five so what if we had zero here foo is equal to zero we don't when we look at the web browser, nothing shows up because we we don't have a condition for, for that that is met. Let's change this to an OR statement. Now the double ampersand is basically synonymous with the word AND. You can say AND here. We can also use a double pop character, which is the character right above the enter button on your keyboard if you hold the shift button down. The pop character, uh, OR, characters we should say. This is saying that if foo is less than 5 or foo is greater than 0 then return true. So save that. Now we get true because it's less than 5. It is less than 5. It's not greater than 0. So one of these is evaluating is true so our statement is executed. So the or logical operator says if this is true or if this is true then run. We could also throw in a not operator at the beginning of a statement. So if we say if foo is not less than 5 then echo true which will give us nothing because 0 is less than 5. If we say foo is 6 now and save that, foo is not less than 5 so it'll say true. Okay. So the not operator can be used before the variables in the expressions or it can be used in the equals part of the expression. And that's all we're going to cover in this video. In the next video we're going to look at, some, at arrays a little bit and cover, cover them and then later on we'll go into loops. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe.